we took basically took this technology, okay, the, the concept behind what's happening in this particular device, and we made it smaller. And we put it in here so that now we can get our bloom forming cyanobacteria out of the top. So we have to have that particular subsample that we use to do other things with. And we're looking at bloom forecasting, what's going on with the population, what does it look like. So we couldn't get our, we call them the BFCs, we couldn't get them out of here because then they're, they're mixed in with all of the phytoplankton and we can't isolate them easily. But if we have them in, in our little pocket zappers, they so actually the form, yeah, we take the top off and they form a little meniscus up at the very top. So we, that's what we're gonna be doing later is we put our net plankton sample in here, we allow it to um, separate for 30 minutes and then you're going in with a pipette and you're just taking off a five mils, Jim? Right, five yeah. mils of total uh -huh. sample off the top um, because it forms this little meniscus on the top and then we'll do the fluorometry and the toxin analysis on that as well. And that's telling us about a whole different part of the cyanobacterial population in terms of what's going on with the toxicity. And then we can compare that to the smaller fractions. So the pico cyanobacteria that we, use, we do by doing all of that filtering that Jim was talking about before. So now we have this great continuum of of what, 0.2 microns, two microns, less than 50 microns, whole lake water, a net plankton sample, and a BFC sample. So we're going to be able to look at all of the different size fractions of the cyanobacteria population in, in the system all at once and do fluorometry and toxin analysis on them. By doing this, what we're doing is we're making a super concentrate of bloom forming cyanobacteria and, and analyzing it for fluorometry and, and toxin. Um, but what we want to do is to be able to understand what's going on in the system sooner. So we, we're sort of like priming mother nature putting the sample in here, doing a super concentrate, and then saying, oh, that's really interesting. What are the values for the fluorometry there? And is, can it tell us something about what might happen like in a couple of weeks when the system has you know, had its opportunity to go through log phase growth and all of that's going on, then, then all of a sudden you see the bloom. So this is our net plankton sample that we've taken a three meter profile through the lake, mm -hmm. um, 50 micron mesh net. Um, so this particular sample, we will place it in our pocket zapper and we let it sit there for um, a half an hour. And during that time period, the bloom forming cyanobacteria, if they are present in this sample, uh, will float to the top. And then we will go in with a, we take off the top, we go in with a pipette, we remove the top five mil subsample from here. Um, and that, if they are present, we'll have the bloom forming cyanobacteria um, in that sample, the BFCs. And so we're just starting to understand what they're all about, um, what their signals are in terms of the fluorometry readings. We're just starting to understand um, what's going on in terms of the toxicity of that particular subgroup of the cyanobacterial population. Um, so that's what we'll be working on actually this summer quite a bit and what the group is, is looking at too.